All right, I am going to, alongside you all, do my own uh, our final project. And the idea that I'm thinking of right now is an all recipes ingredient comparison tool. So yesterday I was looking for recipes for apple cake. Uh, my wife came home with a bunch of apples last weekend and I like apple cake. So when I look at recipes, I usually look at a few different recipes and try and gauge the the quantities of ingredients to kind of get an idea if recipes are very, very similar. So when I was looking at apple cake recipes, I saw a lot of them had two cups of sugar, they'd have one cup of flour, they'd have you know uh, two to four eggs, three to five apples. And my question is, are these really just different versions of the same recipe or is there something different? Might I do something better? Might I get a better result if I sort of averaged out the quantities? But what all recipes doesn't have, which I would like, is something that other, uh, other not recipe websites, but other websites have, such as the Newegg comparison tool. So here I've clicked on five different video cards and hit compare, and we can highlight differences. That's pretty neat. It's got things like what are the ratings on this, what is the, uh, you know, the model, who made this, what sort of stats do these different products have. And what I want to do is be able to plug in different URLs, you know, cut and paste this URL into a script and then have it go into this, pull down the ingredients, and then allow me to compare side by side a few different recipes. Um, so what this will entail is first off web scraping. So I'm going to use rvest because we are using r. This will harvest the HTML, uh, the HTML files and help me to pull out the important points. So for example, we can use HTML elements to find this unordered list. Now actually getting that's going to involve a little bit of fiddling. And I'll do that in a separate video. I'll try and record most of my work on this. But let me start by showing you some setup stuff. So first off, I'm going to do this on my computer. Um, so I've already set up a project, but let me walk you through how you would do that. So you go File, New Project, and a project in RStudio just keeps all your work together. It'll handle your files. You're going to do all this stuff within the same folder. But this just kind of keeps track of settings for you. Uh, it just makes it easier to work on a larger project. So I'm going to create just a dummy project, but you should be keeping it in a folder where you will find it. So I'm going to actually have this in my Eco365 folder under my Fall 22 folder under my Teach folder in Dropbox so that this is going to be automatically backed up and synced between my laptop and my desktop computer at home. But just to show you how this works, I'm going to put this in my temporary folder and give it a directory name of something like All Recipes Project. And then you hit Create Project and it will take care of that for you. Now I've already done that, um, except that our studio had some problems, so I restarted this video. But I've got in this folder all right, so my class folder, I've got a folder called All Recipes, and it's got this .rproj file. Uh, this holds things like project options, so I can modify things. Um, I can say different tab width or whatever. Um, this is just going to hold my work sort of, first off, it's in one place because it's in this folder. And then the project just sort of helps our studio keep track of stuff for me. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is I want to just create a readme.md file. Yes, so this is a text file that's going to sort of give a description of what I'm doing. So my title, All Recipes Ingredient Comparison Tool. Uh, this project will use Arvest to scrape uh, recipe details from allrecipes.com and allow the user to compare 
the ingredients of different recipes. Right. Simple as that. Nothing too complicated. Uh, it'll get more complicated as I go on, but this is sort of the core thing. What is the basic functionality I want? I want to pull details from allrecipes.com. I might make it more elaborate to include other websites in the future. Uh, so I could have, you know, create a function that takes a URL and says, oh, this is an all recipes URL. We're going to use this other function to process that. Or here's one from you know, cooks.com. We're going to use a different set of code to pull that recipe out because there will be differences between different websites. But a website that has a lot of recipes, once we figure out how to do it for one recipe, we can roll that logic into a function that's going to pull from a lot of other functions. So I've got a very basic description, and then I'm going to create a basic script, and I will call this uh, all recipes parse.r. Library tidyverse, library rvest. And let's just grab a sample URL. So example URL will be just this. All right, so let's run this. It's going to take a sec. We've attached our libraries. We've got our example URL. And so now I'm going to use t just as a temporary variable while I figure this out. Read HTML is our basic way into this for our example URL. So what I'm going to do is sort of fiddle around with this, see what I find, try to find my way into the list that I want, and then ultimately get ingredient list will be a function of some URL. I'm going to you know, figure it out and then pull that logic into this function. Right, so right off the bat, I can set up the logic as I'm figuring it out. And then I want the output to be, uh, well, I guess a, a data frame. Initially, this data frame is going to be just the list items, but I also want to parse each one to say, you know, one cup of something or 200 grams of something, right? I want to split that up. So I'll have another function at some point to parse that. But right now I'm just kind of putting stuff in places, sort of making a mess of my script, and then I'll tidy it up as I go. All right, so that's it for setup. Um, while we're here, let's just take a quick look at some of the URLs. So when you're web scraping, it's helpful to look at the HTML code that you're trying to dig into. So I don't want the Pinterest pins or the Facebook or whatever else. Uh, let's look for ingredients. Ooh, where'd it go? We have this. Oh, come on. Why is this not doing what I want it to do? All right, ingredients. Ooh, we got prep time. That's nice. We got some nutritional details, uh, some links, same as. <laughs> I don't know what same as is supposed to mean in that case. We got a video. So all of this is a bunch of stuff contained within something. So we've got this script, and then we've got this other chunk of things. So this might actually be really helpful. This might give me everything I need. Uh, recipe ingredient. So I'm looking for clues for the stuff I'm going to have to find later on. Let's keep looking at other ingredients. So we're getting some comments. Um, something that is helpful with all recipes is often the top comments will say, hey, this was great, but use this instead of this, or use a little bit more or a little bit less of this ingredient. So that might be something I want to build into my feature, into my uh, product eventually. Uh, but <clears throat> This is the basic sort of a process. You might also come here, grab something, and use inspect. And then this will put us right into the HTML where we're looking. So I've got 
MNTL structured ingredients, that's helpful. This UL, that is an unordered list in HTML. So this is really what I'm after. All right, so this class, can I copy this? Uh, outer HTML, I think that's what I want. Kind of, sort of. All right, this is what I want. Cool, so. Uh, gradient list uh, class, this is an HTML class, is this. So let's see if I can go T and then in rvest, HTML elements, text two. Let's see, where is, don't necessarily want the source code. Here we go, reference. Uh, children, elements, form, form set. Ooh, that's nice. You could submit forms through this. Uh, this would be good if you wanted to cheat in some sort of a online popularity contest, like vote for your favorite show where they don't require an email. If you can do an HTML form set, then you could have our uh, ruin that poll for someone. Um, HTML encoding guess. Ooh, there's all kinds of cool stuff. All right, HTML. Let's try, well, maybe attributes, maybe elements. Either a document. All right, so that's going to be this T thing that we just made. An X path. Eh, maybe, maybe not. Look at the examples. So H1. Uh, dot important. If I remember correctly, a dot is for an ID, and then a hashtag is... Oh, that's for an ID. Okay, oh, here we go. Perfect. We're picking up clues as we go. Dot important. This is for something that says class important. So this is exactly what I want. Hopefully you can tell by watching me that I am figuring this stuff out as I go. All right. So I believe this will work. What have we got for ingredients? We got a list of stuff. We're going to have to pull that out in some way or another. Uh, but let's take a look inside as much as we can. Let's view ingredients. We've got this list. We've got list items. All right, this is good. So let's check ingredients, double square bracket one. We got these things. Cool. Uh, and then what did we just do to pull this stuff out? Let's try HTML element elements because we're doing multiple ones. And let's look for list items. All right, that's giving us that. And then what was it we were looking at? So this gives us this set of things, uh, HTML elements. How do we pull the items out of that? HTML text two. Let's give that a whirl. HTML text two. There we go. So uh, just bumbling around, I've already figured out sort of the the hardest part really is getting, well, maybe not. The first hard part is getting the data. So right now I have a way to get this list. So this list is going to be taking the page and then I take this page and actually I'm pretty happy with this being a list instead of a data frame. We can make a separate function called parse ingredient list. And I'm going to keep my formatting the same, get ingredient list with underscores instead of camel case. So I've got this, and actually I don't even need to create intermediate things. I can just go to HTML, oops, HTML elements, pipe that into HTML text. So let's see if this works. Get this function into here and actually let me quickly clear things up just 
to make sure I'm not messing stuff up too badly. Let's get rid of this stuff. Tidyverse Arvest, that's already there. Example URL, get ingredient list. This will be something else. Um, call that ingredients for now. But let's see if get ingredient list works for our example URL. We're getting something. All right. Uh, the formatting isn't exactly what I was hoping for or expecting, but we can solve that. Uh, let's just also quickly go to any other recipe. Don't need this in spec right now. Fall. Ooh, Thai coconut soup. Let's get that one. Not too late. All right. So, plug this one in quotes. Do I get a list? I get a list. All right. So, what I've done is I've found a way to basically take a URL and to pull from that URL the list of ingredients specifically. Now, adding in more stuff is going to be more work. Parsing this list out is going to be more work. So, one thing is that these uh, slash ends, these are new line characters. I can use that to split this into different things. So, if I do this, and I think this is string split uh, on X, and our split is going to be slash n slash n. Let's see what I get. There we go. So that was not too hard to solve, uh, although it is into a list, so I want to do unlist. And now I've got just a vector of these ingredients. From here, I need to parse that. So let's take this, take what we've learned. I will say string split on slash n slash n, and then unlist. Cool. And that wants to be indented, so let's let it be indented. Resave that work. Let's try this again. Cool. So now we've got that automated. Try another one just for kicks. Let's see what's in this coconut. Get, oops, ingredient list for this URL, and we're getting a list. All right. So uh, you just spent 10 minutes watching me fiddle around with this. Hopefully that was useful for you if you are doing uh, or thinking about a web scraping project. I'm going to stop here and I will do some more of this in the future uh, or actually I'm going to start this in two minutes but I'll make it a separate video. All right as usual if you've got any questions let me know in the usual places and I will talk to you in the future.